Today we're going to be working on a new project of mine. It's a VG30 TT engine from a 1991 Nissan 300ZX. Unfortunately, the car met a demise when it was wrapped around a tree. Everybody understands why this isn't going back. Yeah. Upon inspection of the engine, I realized that I should probably tear it all the way down just to make sure for the type of power I want to get out of it, I want to make sure everything inside was the best it could possibly be. Upon inspection of the pistons, found that one of the piston ring landings had severed away from the actual piston itself. This is actually cylinder number two. Luckily it didn't hurt or score the walls, but it gave me an excuse to upgrade them to some forged pistons. I like it when my engines, no matter what they go in, look just as good as the outside of the vehicle. So the plan today is to prep the block and then put a layer of primer on and the uh, color. I'm going to match the color to the actual vehicle, even though this is such a small and confined engine, you probably won't see very much of the color. I like to know it's there, not to mention it's an extra way to keep rust from form. And with that, I'm gonna get some supplies. I actually like to use a degreaser to get in all the cracks and the crevices, the small, they call them acid brushes. They're very good, very small, it's okay if you trash them while you're doing this. But basically, you want to make sure that you're getting all of the oily residue and buildup that has formed on the engine block over the years. Um, the other reason for painting a block, not to mention the fact that it looks so nice, is for protection, um, freeze plugs, if they start to rust, that can cause a failure and an antifreeze leak. So that is one of the main reasons to paint, in my opinion. Now this block has already been cooked and cleaned at a machine shop when it was poured and honed out for the new pistons. They're 88 millimeter forged. basically 40 over all the rest of the little parts like the piston squirters which throw oil up onto the underside of the pistons to keep them cooler they're all soaking in a carburetor cleaning bath to make sure that i've got any residual oils or anything out of the system because i'm pretty sure they didn't get cooked with the block In reading about these engines on the computer internet, I found that inside these water jackets here, this is where the water pump goes, and inside here it was a really rough casting. It created a lot of little, the best way to describe it would be a stalactite. They said one of the best things you can do for these engines cooling wise is to actually get in there with a grinder and get rid of all of those little tiny burrs that can heat up and cause a hot spot in the cooling which can lead to air bubbles forming inside the system and because for every pound of pressure that you have in your system, you gain, I think it's 10 degrees, higher boiling point. So it actually keeps your block cooler. Every little bit helps, especially in a turbo application, even though this will be intercooled, keeping everything as controlled as possible is always the best. Now again, a lot of this is probably redundant, cleaning this much whatever can help keep the paint on 
will help keep the outside of the block itself protected from all the different road debris that pops up as you're driving down, salts, uh, if you live in uh, wintry areas, or if you live in Florida. Sea and salt spray, brutal. We're going to be using a type of an etch primer. It's got a chemical and mechanical hold to it. And this is just so that you actually remove after going through, you don't want pockets of this sitting anywhere. And that'll cause a paint failure. We'll actually blow off the block before actually putting any color on it. As you can see, my rag isn't really changed that much because it was already pretty clean to start with. The machine shut down. One more side and I get to mix up some paint. Again, I hope you guys like the content you're seeing. If you do, please feel free to leave a comment below. Tell me what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of. I'm hoping on doing an entire video build with the vehicle and everything that this engine's going in. I'll keep that to myself for right now, but just understand that even though this is not going back into a Nissan, it will be going into a very unique home. That's a little teaser to keep you guys watching. Hoping to do a whole bunch of different videos that relate to all different forms of modifying from building air dams, Spoilers, all kinds of different stuff for cars. I am not one for stock vehicles. Never have been, never will be. I like to personalize my vehicle and my friends' vehicles if they want me to. Um, I like the uniqueness of it, the creativity of it. I will modify sections that some people will never see just because of the fact that I know it's modified. All right, let me go get the air blower and then this thing will be ready to dry off. I recommend whenever using an air blower that you keep it on low or you make sure your eyes are protected. It's just to clean out the different bolt holes that are throughout the block and clean all the cracks and crevices I couldn't get into with the rag. to dry the block. So now I'm going to go ahead and mix up some paint and we'll spray this thing. Next step you want to do is just to go through, tack off any dust that might be on the block using basically a cheesecloth uh, tack rag, whatever you want to call it. And when you get ready to spray, you want to make sure to do it in light coats, never heavy coats. The reason why is because of all the different surfaces. You're not dealing with just a single plane here that you can go back and forth on. You're dealing with lots of cracks that have multiple planes on them. So whenever you're spraying something like that, you always want to do light over heavy or else you get too much buildup in certain areas and that's where runs come from. 
grab the paint gun, we'll turn the exhaust fan on and go to town. Okay, we'll give that a couple minutes to tack off and go. All right, we'll do one more coat, get complete coverage, and then we'll have our dry time, give or take. Um, have to read the side of the can for that, and then we'll be able to put some color on there. You'll get to see what color the vehicle it's going in is. Once the block has gotten to the point where it has a light tack to it, but the block isn't dried enough that the paint won't make a chemical bond to it, this is the point which is the best to actually put your color on because then it gets a chemical and a mechanical etch to it, whereas sometimes you'll only get a... Looks like we've got complete coverage everywhere. You want to make sure that you've got proper ventilation whenever using any kind of spray equipment. This is actually automotive grade paint. So it has hardeners and some catalysts in it that you definitely don't want to breathe. That's why you got one of these. And I also have a proper ventilation. We got a little weight, a clean coat. All right, now it's time for the second coat. Uh, I got pretty good coverage on the first coat. I really like this, it's an industrial paint. Grab the gun, put the last coat on, and move on. So here we Now that's actually the port that you need to clean out for the water pump that has all this stalactites in it. I'm going to let it cook under the infrared for a while and we'll call this video done. Looking forward to the next one. Whenever I tape up a block like this to make sure if there's any moisture in the block that I don't have an issue, I throw a couple of those desiccant packets that you get. I keep them all. I throw them in there. That way, if there's any moisture inside the block, I don't have to worry about flash rusting nearly as much. And we'll start the assembly of the bottom end. Thanks, and look forward to the next video.